Um, we were talking, we were gone all cultural this morning because we've just talked to the, uh, talks about this this great show, uh, public service announcement that's on at Circa for the next couple of weeks. But of course, we've also been keeping track of an independent production about the parliamentary protest and occupation um, with, I don't know, the working or the real title, River of Freedom, in response, of course, to the River of Filth comments about a now dearly departed cabinet minister who's no longer in cabinet, uh, Michael Woods. Um, it's been a long time in the making, the River of, of Freedom documentary film project, cultural project. Um, so we thought we'd catch up with where it's at because it sounds to me like we're getting to the sharp end of the project. Jared Conan, who is the producer of, uh, one of the producers of River of Freedom, uh, joins us by video link now. Jared, lovely to see you again. How are you? Yeah, very good. Great to be back on the platform, Sean. All right, mate. So where are we at with uh, with the film? Um, we're ready to release it. We're wow. finished. We're um, we're actually in the final sound mix at the moment, um, you know, which is pretty impressive, I have to say. Our um, sound designer who's been putting that together has, you know, really knocked it out of the park. It's, um, you know, Chris Sinclair in Christchurch has been working on it hard with us. And, um, you know, we've got Gaylene Barnes down there in the studio, you know, getting uh, ready to sort of put it out and get it into theatres. So we are going um, to theatres across the country as well. Yeah. You talked to me about a possible uh, collaboration or a possible break you were going to get from a, a major music figure. Did that come off? We did, Eric Clapton. Yep, he's um, he's a supporter of us. He gave us uh, one of his tracks, which is um, yeah, embedded in the heart of the uh, documentary. And uh, you'll be pleased to know, Sean, his song plays under the commentary from um, Alistair at the backbencher, as Alistair describes the uh, survey that the platform did down at the protest. Oh, the no, okay. Excellent, excellent. So are, but music yes, by... Music, uh, soundtrack <laughs> by Eric Clapton. I mean, that's something, man. Yeah, that yeah. Is no, we've got um, Eric there. we got Right Said Fred joined us um, as well. They gave us some music. Jason Kerrison from New Zealand, you know, he was down at the protest performing and, you know, we've just got a string of amazing uh, New Zealand musicians. And the, the soundtrack, you know, is composed by Russell Walder and it is um, pretty mind-boggling, uh, to mm. be honest. You know, you watch it and it's a real, um, yeah, it's a real emotional journey being there. Okay, how long's the movie? It's actually quite long. It was quite a long protest. We were there for uh, 21 days. So <laughs> we couldn't get the uh, the regular 90 minutes. So um, it does run at two and a half hours. So okay. the, um, a few of the theatres have sort of, you know, sort of shied away from it for that reason because it doesn't fit their regular slots. But, um, you know, there's no blue people running around in it that took three hours. So I'm not too sure why they're steering away from it, Sean, but um, that's all right. And the that's, you know, I, went, I was talking about this, this stage show I went to. It was two hours long, two and a half hours. I, I don't think that's out of the park. For a unique project like this, and I guess the thing is it is a big project because it presents the counterfactual to what has been mainstream media's take on, on, on the protest. And for that reason, I think it's a culturally significant work that you've made. doesn't matter how many people see it. Um, and the amount of time and effort you've put in, I, I think, means it's worthy of, of consideration or at least viewing. Are you going to premiere it or does it just, is it soft launch? No, premieres. Um, our marketing is all built around the premiere idea, really. Um, yeah. So we're... Um, we have the premiere, uh, our opening event is at the Civic Theatre in Auckland, Tuesday mm -hmm. the 5th of September. Tickets are for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to Ticketmaster for that. We've also, uh, then we travel to Christchurch, Hoyts Rickerton, uh, on Wednesday the 6th, and mm -hmm. then on Thursday the 7th of September, we're at the Embassy in Wellington. Christchurch and uh, Wellington, you can find tickets on Event Finder. Yeah, I'll it, definitely uh, come along to the Wellington. I'm almost inclined to go up to Auckland for the Civic one. Uh, to be honest, have you had any difficulties? Because this is unusual. Normally, you'd do this, you know, theatre only. Normally, people would release this online and look for virality and everything. I think it's an interesting strategy. Um, have you had any problems getting theatres agreeing to run it? Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, mm. we we started in January. To be honest, we knew that this was always going to be an uphill battle for us. We're self distributing um, again because. It's not something that a lot of distributors would see as having value. So we started those inquiries in uh, January in our uh, distribution coordinator, Heidi Watson. She called all the theatres throughout the country to have that conversation with them. 
um, you know, gauged their, their level of interest. You know, some of them were just, you know, jumping out of their skin to, to screen it and others just wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot barge pole. Uh, we've, it's become more so uh, as we got closer, as we, you know, reality comes in and we say, we've finished the film and we want to screen it, will you play it? Uh, there's been a lot of resistance. People are just, uh, it's, it's the classic self-censorship situation where people uh, believe that they should not let us um, have that. Well, it's fear. It's fear of being cancelled. Um, yeah. It's fear of the social media consequences rather than freedom uh, to, to express yourself or indeed let others express themselves. Um, I know when we first talked, it was about raising money and getting enough money for the project. Have you managed to break even? Have you managed to pay all the bills or are you... Uh, got your fingers no, crossed for, for not, yeah, fingers crossed for a few sales. We think, um, you know, look that, that that when we first talked, Sean, and you know, we did that outreach through the platform. That was a massive uplift for us. You know, no doubt that's how we got to the cinemas at the end of the day. You know, we had a huge um, pouring out of money from people. It's just being able to speak to people and tell them what we're doing. Mm. You know, our, our uh, you know, we've got our own networks that um, you know sort of came to help as well. But just being able to say to people. You know, we need that financial help to get us here. Mm. And, and look, we've done it. You know, we've 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 managed to you know get to this point. You know, but you know, it's uh, you know, been through a lot of goodwill in our team. You know, we've got an amazing team who've put this film together. Mm. Have you had any official resistance? Have you had the disinformation project coming for you, or anyone else saying that? I mean, my other thought is it might be defined. The electoral commission might come for you. They seem to be very interested in anyone. Who expresses an opinion in this country as we have an election coming up? Have you had lawyers look at it? Because I just wouldn't be surprised yeah. if the Human Rights Commission or someone decides to have a go at you. Yeah, no, um, we have had lawyers have a look at it. Um, it's a it's a tricky one because it becomes that you know the opinion as opposed to mm. this is actually you know, what it is. Yeah, um, but we're, we're we're comfortable in going out with our release at the end of the day. You know. <laughs> We don't have a big release throughout the country theatrically, so it's going to be, yeah, you know, it's going to, you know, it, it may live in some theatres longer who've got a big solid audience, but no, nobody's come to us directly. Um, yeah, you know, we've been advertising. I mean, yeah, you know, we went to the Civic, which is owned by the Auckland Council, you know, and we had yeah. that very frank conversation with them to say, this is the content, this is the story, this yeah. is the message. They've seen the trailer, they've seen all the EPK material, so, and they were very supportive. They said, no, the venue cool. is for the people. It's a public venue. Um, you know, because we, our concern is the, these venues receiving pressure to yeah, stop the yeah. um, screens going ahead, and we didn't yeah. want to lose out on our the thugs' veto. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jared, you did go with River of Freedom. That is the name of the movie. You stuck with that. That wasn't just a working title. No, River of Freedom. Yeah, it, well, it was a working title, and it stuck. Okay, <laughs> and if people want to see the movie, where do they go to get tickets or to find out when it's on and where? You got a website. The, um, yeah, so for the Civic, it's Ticketmaster. Uh, yeah. and it's in Auckland, Tuesday the 5th of September. For Christchurch, that is Wednesday the 6th of September, and that is Event Finder. And Wellington at the Embassy is uh, Thursday the 7th of September, and that is Event Finder again. So, um, you know, Christchurch and Wellington, we've sold half the theatres out already within a week. Um, Queen, uh, Auckland, we've only just put online, so um, you know tickets are sort of you know, going out the door pretty quickly. So it's just, it's the old, you know, better get in quick to make sure we you know we plan to sell out the Civic, but we need yeah, everybody there. Yeah. Going fast, going fast is what is what, yeah. is what you say, um, Jared. We had yesterday. I went to the press conference at the Parliament yesterday. The podium tr of truth is done. COVID is officially over. Um, is there a danger that we don't want to look back at, at what happened at Parliament, what which oh. was part of the COVID narrative? Yeah, um, yeah, definitively. I, I've I've started these conversations again just in my own industry, you know, mm. and people do not want to know about it. Like those who complied and set the rules and made sure that nobody could come to work if they you know didn't um, play by the government's rule book. They don't want to look back on it. They just see it as being, oh well, that's all good. We're back. We're back to work. Life is carries on, and mm. um, it's like, no, 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 no. There's, there's a bigger, you know, there's a bigger uh, situation going on on here that we really need to be aware of, and it sort of goes back to, you know, and we speak to it in the in the documentary quite a bit that the politicians never came out to speak to the people, and that was the issue. Yeah, and yep. that issue has not been solved, and that has not been addressed, and 
we are you know, adamant that there needs to be some kind of uh, consideration given to what the people were saying, because the, 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 um, you know, the Royal Inquiries going to, you know, in my opinion, just glaze over it. Um, you know, they're not really there to dig into it. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, there is an open conversation, an open dialogue. And, you know, this is why we're talking to the Free Speech Union and they're looking, you know, they're yeah. considering supporting the project because they can see the importance of the message yeah. in the film as well. Yeah, good on them. And, you know, we, we, we do a bit of stuff with, with the Free Speech Union as well. And I think also the thing is, Jared. Uh, what is history? What is our social history? Will it evolve? I, I always say uh, news journalism is the first draft of, of history. And then people and all sorts of different people from different perspectives come back and they have another crack at it. Give us, peel off another layer of the onion, give us another interpretation. So, I, and, you know, I think some people would be resistant to seeing this because they'll say, I don't want to know. But I think it's important. And I think what happened there was important. And seeing it from your perspective or the collective inspec uh, perspective of all the people involved in this project is kind of important for New Zealand history yeah. and, and understanding. Yeah, it hasn't been shared yet. It hasn't been shared in a, in a mainstream sort of media. And we, we were very clear that we wanted to hit theatres. This was our goal. Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, we can make something and we can go online and we can rely on the virality of the story, but we wanted to make something of a level that was... Um, you know, just engaging and it had the elements of entertainment and the narrative that you really, you know, the audience mm. joins you on the story of the pro of the convoy and then into the protest and you meet all these characters that we've found and we've shot interviews with them and gone back and just, just woven this beautiful story about New Zealanders because that's who it is. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 the you know, the rhetoric around the, the extremists and the and the and the nut jobs and the oh, yeah. you know, the, the well, assault. I'm responsible for half of that, that, but it's just I'm just having fun. <laughs> um I look forward. Yeah. I really look forward to seeing this. I wish you the best. Keep in touch if anything else we can do to help uh push the boat out, please please do let us know. What's next for you? Because this one's almost over. Uh, Once it's in the movie theatres, that's yeah. it, your baby's gone. What are you gonna do yeah. next? I'll, um, well, no, we're prepping a film at the moment to shoot in Queenstown. So, um, yeah, we've got a feature film down here. So I've you know, sort of moved out of my uh, lovely home in Palmerston North and you know, schlepped myself to the cold mountains. Uh, but, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit more, um, you know, it's, it's, you could say it's a, you know, a, a similar theme, but it's a, it's a post-apocalyptic neo-Western redemption story. Oh, so we, we see a lot of... Uh, Horses chase through the mountains with a gunfight, but there's a um, there's some uh, monsters hiding in the forest. So, um, yeah, yeah. We, look, it's just you know we, yeah. we all like to keep busy. Um, you yeah. know, the film industry is an entertaining place. Yeah. But um, just one last plug for the film: people can subscribe to it at um, riveroffreedom.nz. That's where you can find us. If people subscribe there, then they get all the notices about what's happening, releases, trailers, teasers, all of that sort of stuff. So, um. It's um it's a pretty powerful film, Sean. And yeah, um, yeah again, thank you for the platform. I look forward to seeing it, my friend. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Jared Conan, he is one of the producers of River of Freedom, um, which is really an, a totally independent, not New Zealand on air funded, not public interest journalism fund funded, not government funded. It is uh, uh, some original filming, some new filming, and they've got footage from the convoy that led to the 21-day protest at Parliament, what went on there. Uh, it comes from a perspective you probably hadn't, haven't seen before um, out in theatres. Um, and what was it? Riveroffreedom.com or .co. Um, keep up with it. I recommend you see it. I recommend you see it as a part of New Zealand history seen from a non-government funded perspective, which is all a good thing.